Hello guys, welcome everybody to Purple Ace Podcast. I am your lovely host Isaac here. So today I kind of want to talk about, about KOC should be on the hot seat today. So let's get right to it. So I think KOC should be on the hot seat next season because here's some here's a lot of reasons why Kevin O'Connell should be on the hot seat. And you know... I've tried to defend him against the Bengals because I thought that was more player execution than um, than him calling plays. Maybe the Brandon Powell, but eh, I really, I, I digress, but anyways, so I've tried to defend him right there, but after the Lions game, I kind of have to rip the bandaid off and say that that he should absolutely be in the hot seat next season because there's just no excuses, man. I mean, here's why. It's because he's he's not good. He hasn't gotten better at play calling. He hasn't gotten better at player personnel. He hasn't gotten better at any of it, at game management. And so, and with the backup quarterback situation mainly, it's the the main theme that I have seen over these this season is dream team. That's what that's what matters most. The dream team matters the most. It's not about putting winners out there for Kevin O'Connell. It's about putting some just a bunch of friends. Just it doesn't matter if they have football skills. It doesn't matter if they're better than the other. It's all about that. That's what it's all about, man. And and you know what? I've seen this movie play out before in the past with Les Frazier, Mike Zimmer, and now KOC. I'm seeing the same exact thing over and over and over again. And that's why I'm really not surprised that they lost to the Detroit Lions, really. And... That's why I'm not surprised really one bit or mad because I know how it's going to play out. I see it. And and I said because Nick Mullins is going to start, I mean, I disagree with it. And the least you could have done to save that game was if you put Jaron Hall in the second half. There was no reason for Nick Mullins because... We already know who Nick Mullins and Joshua Dobbs are. For every touchdown they throw, there's also a turnover that comes with it. And and albeit, granted, Josh Dobbs definitely did get the team two wins. He did a great job in the last two games against the Falcons and against the Saints. But they're not starting caliber quarterbacks. We all know this. I've been clamoring for Jaron Hall since after, after, from the aftermath of the Denver Broncos game on Sunday night. I've been clamoring for this kid to come out there and show us what he is. Because he looked really good against the Falcons. Like, okay, the last five games, the backup quarterbacks that Kevin O'Connell started has been one in four. Barely beating the Vegas Raiders three to nothing. You lost the last four. You lost the other four, basically due to turnovers from the quarterbacks. It's just not going to really cut it. See, the backup quarterbacks, mind you, have thrown 12 interceptions in the last five games. Both Josh Dobbs and Nick Mullins combined. With the fact that they are hospitalizing balls and they're just doing all of this. Why are we not, why are we so scared to see what Jaron Hall is made of? And we drafted him. Like, why are we so afraid of this? What What is so against starting Jaron Hall though? I just want to know that. Man. Because, okay, listen man. It's just, I'm not saying that he should be fired, but here's the deal. And also, yes, injuries. We've had a lot of injuries, no doubt. And and could Kirk Cousins win this game? Absolutely. But 
none of that, but none of that really has to do with his in-game management, with his player personnel, his play calling. Injuries don't have to do with anything about that, man. It has nothing to do with it. So, and and just to be clear, yes, the turnovers, but there have been multiple times where the Vikings have to win, where they have an opportunity to win despite the turnovers. Against Chicago, you had Josh Dobbs throwing four interceptions, and then you and then after Josh Mattel's fumble the ball, you do a run, run, pass, defense, defense, defense type of play right there. That's not going to work at all, man. That's not going to work. In most league, it's not. And just, and then by starting Nick Mullins, he threw away the game despite throwing three interceptions. Let's say that fourth interception had happened. They had a chance to win. They were driving down the field with Justin Jefferson. And by and why I put that on KOC is because, is because, he already threw three interceptions. You're going to trot this man to put the game-winning touchdown when when he was already frozen and he was already scared out there? You're going to put him out there? Why? Then why then? Like, they should serious. I'm I'm still going to say that Jaron Hall deserves a chance. And also, not to mention, speaking of Justin Jefferson... I really feel bad for Justin Jefferson for having to put this team on his back. He fumbled, Nick Mullins fumbled the ball, and then Justin Jefferson recovered himself and also had a big play for like, what, like 18 yards to get this team on his back? And the rest of the guys, Patrick Jones II, who's putting big numbers out there, Daniil Hunter who's being productive, Ty Chandler, who's slicing it up in the running game, and TJ Hawkinson and Jordan Addison. They literally deserve all, they all deserve better. And and the sad thing is, I know they have Kevin O'Connell's back. I know that. But at some point, if he continues this up, I have a very bad feeling that Justin Jefferson or somebody else is going to ask for to get to leave Minnesota. I think that's the truth. And it the only way that I ever see this not happening at all is that Kevin O'Connell really, 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 really needs to get rid of, of play calling duties and personnel duties. And in the offseason, if Wes Phillips isn't the offensive coordinator for this team and is not a good play caller than Kevin O'Connell, fine. You can get a lot of candidates out there, like such as maybe Eric Bieniemy from the Washington Commanders, Brian Johnson from the Detroit Lions. Anybody can be an offensive coordinator. They are very good. You can do it. Like, there's no reason for this. Like, there is absolutely no reason for you to be blowing through games because you have... I mean, I'm not saying that technically you're out, but it's getting pretty close. I'm not, and no, I'm not cheering for my team to lose. That's never my thing at all. I've never done that before, but you have to give up play calling duties right now to basically save this team. That's, and, and look at, you know what? Look at Dan Campbell. Look at Nick Sirianni. They gave, they're both offensive dudes. And they gave up offensive play calling to the other offensive coordinators. And you can see it, it's working. It's working out really, really well. So why not do that, Kevin O'Connell? You need to do it, man. It does. It's not that hard. It's really not. So thank you guys. So that's my take, really. He should be on the hot seat. 2024 is really going to determine if he stays much longer. But that's for another one. So thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you guys hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Already, we'll have an, we'll, we'll do another video t on Friday. Skull.